Hey GP learners, in this episode we're going to be talking with the team from Cogniton, talking about their product Healthy Note, which is basically designed to help you understand and get information to patients easily, effectively, and hopefully with no stress. We're going to be talking about all this with them right now, so let's give you a demo and let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. <music> Hi, GP learners. So I'm joined by Alice and Tim from Cognitance, and they're going to be talking, as I said, about Healthy Note. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. So I'm going to pass over first to Tim, if that's all right. Thank you, Dr. Gandalf. <laughs> um, my name's Tim Ringrose. I'm a nephrologist by background, but um, you may know of Dr. Net UK, which I was the CEO of until a few years ago, uh, when I set up Cognitant Group, and that's uh, where we're here today. And our, we're a digital health company, and our focus is on health information, particularly for patients. Uh, and with me is Alice. Over to you, Alice. Hi, I'm a GP in Buckinghamshire, and I've recently joined Cognitant Group as a clinical director. Cool. So can you tell us a little bit about what Cognitant is? Because I'm aware people may not have heard of exactly what you guys are and what you do and that kind of stuff. Great. Thanks. If you could switch on the, the screen sharing, that would be great. Thanks. So um, it's not by any means confidential. Please tell everyone about it. Um, we're, we're, we're Cognizant Group. And our focus, as I mentioned, is around providing better health information. Uh, we're very pleased today to be with you this afternoon. And what we'd like to do is just to share a little bit about what we're doing. And we'll talk about the motivation for it and give you a demo about how it works. And we're very pleased that we've already won some awards. And what we're trying to do is just to tackle some of the problems about inequities of health information to make health information much more accessible and impactful. And particularly with the move to digital that COVID's really stimulated, you know, we believe that there's a real need for better digital health information systems. So let me just hand over to Alice. So we're very much a mission-based company and believe that patients and general population should be active participants in their health and care um, and it you know reflects the movement of modern medicine from old paternalistic views to more shared care decision making um, but to be able to make informed decisions about your health you need to be empowered or patients need to be empowered with good information um, to enable any of us to be engaged informed patients and carers we need trustworthy information about our health and treatment so I guess in theory that's not a problem. Um, we can get information online anytime, anywhere. What's the fuss? Um, well, actually, we think that's the biggest problem. Um, paradoxically, the more information we have access to, the harder it is to find the right information. Um, and by right information, you know, information that's relevant to us, and also information that's reliable. And it's not just a problem for patients and carers. As a GP, I frequently find myself you know, down a rabbit hole trying to find relevant information for a patient. If it's not on my go-to website, then I struggle and I'm inev inevitably running late during my consultation anyway. So trying to find really good information to help the patient is really difficult. What's more is not only is reliable information difficult to find, inf misinformation is really easy to find and hard to avoid. Um, and it's been brought to sharp focus in the last couple of years, you know, with the spread of rumours, dangerous mistruths about COVID, virus and vaccines. You only have to watch the news this morning and Nicki Minaj mentioned, you know, influence, influences perpetuating the problems of mistruths. Um, so it's everywhere. I'm sure most of you listening today will have had examples where, um, you know, patients and carers have come in and you've really had to stretch those GP communication skills to kind of challenge and untangle those mistruths that they're really holding dear. Um, so I guess misinformation is one of the most dangerous things we face in the modern world at the moment. And as President Biden put it recently, it is killing people. Um, a survey this year was trying to look at what made uh, people particularly vulnerable to believing misinformation. And I suppose you'd think, you know, socio-demographics, -dem socio-economic status, maybe political factors, but no, none of these. What they found was that um, patient, oh, individuals with poorer digital literacy, numerical literacy and cognitive skills um, were more likely to believe misinformation. Um, and interestingly, they also showed that if these individuals were shown accurate information first, 
they were less likely to believe the mistruths and the misinformation. So it just shows how important um, good information is. Um, another problem is that much of the health information that's published is really hard for large portions of the population to un understand. Um, a study published in the BJGP showed that 43% of the UK population were unlikely to be able to understand typical information leaflets. So that further heightens health inequalities that we're really trying to address. I'm going to hand back to Tim. Thanks, Alice. So um, that's our mission, which is you know a big mission, and we obviously can't cure it all. Um, but we decided to start off by looking at how to create health information that was easy for people to understand. And we looked at other industries and we could see that visual content uh, has a lot of advantages. And you can see some screenshots here of examples that we've built over the last 18 to 24 months. Uh, we, can, we sometimes build very simple 2D animations like comics. We sometimes build 3D scenes that can be viewed in VR mode, virtual reality mode, or with augmented reality. Uh, and what we've tried to do is to make the content uh, accessible on a wide variety of devices so that if a patient wants to look at it on a smartphone or an iPad or a laptop or even a VR headset, um, they, can, they can look at the same content. And what we found is that visual content is much more accessible. It's much easier for people of all ages and abilities to understand. You can often transcend language barriers as well using visual content, although it's still important to think about producing content in different languages for some groups. And what we found is that people's memory, their recall of the information was also substantially better with visual information. Uh, it seems to stick in the brain more and uh, particularly virtual reality experiences uh, seem to engage different parts of the brain rather than just the prefrontal cortex. Uh, and most interesting of all, I guess, is that it, it seems to also have a more profound effect on people's subsequent behavior. So I think particularly if we're thinking about educating people about long-term conditions, visual content has some definite advantages. Um, but, you know, as Alice has mentioned, there's a lot of good health, health information out there. And so as well as producing our own information, we've also been working with partners who already produce good information. And that's that led us on to thinking about, well, it's, it's fine producing good health information, but how do we ensure that people get the right health information? So here are some of the uh, different sort of forms of content that we and techniques that we've been using. It can vary from very simple techniques, even sometimes print, um, but also use games, which can be very useful for young people. Uh, and as I mentioned, virtual reality, augmented reality, and in other forms of immersive content. So as Tim said, we know that good information is out there. Often the challenge is finding it and get, giving it to patients um, in a format that helps. So it's in response to this challenge that we developed our platform called Healthy Note, um, and it's designed to help healthcare professionals like you and I and patients and carers kind of see the wood for the trees when it comes to health information. So the platform's aimed to get the right information at the right time in the right format to patients. So by this, we're talking about reliable health information that's relevant to that individual getting it into their hands at a time when they have the time and inclination to digest it, not when they're rushed and flustered during a consultation, um, and getting it to them in a format that's suitable to their background and literary needs and, um, and healthcare needs. As GPs, we've all tried to share quite complicated information during a 10 minute consultation, and it, it doesn't work in reality. You can spend the whole 10 minutes talking at the patient to try and get all the information they need across. And at the end of it, they probably get 10 meters outside the room before they've forgotten most of it or they're distracted during the consultation because actually they want to get to something else that they want to talk to you that's on their problem list. Um, so um, giving patients resources to go away and look at information is really important. So if we go to the next slide, it shows you a bit more about our Healthy Note platform. Um, on here, we're constantly curating the best information and material available and kind of creating a library of health information, drawing on our own content that we've created, but also, as we mentioned, other really good resources. So on Healthy Note, we've got um, the NHS Digital A to Z Library of Information. We've got um, over 30 charity partners who provide brilliant information relevant to specific conditions. 
We've got videos commissioned by NHSX, ORCA approved apps, and as I said, content from um, content ourselves. So as GPs in our consultations with patients, whether it's remote or face-to-face, -face, this is a really critical opportunity um, where GPs sort of trust us for health and advice. And we're really well placed to say, give information to them and say, this is helpful. This is going to help. Please go away, read it, digest it. Um, and Healthy Note helps put the information you need to empower patients at your fingertips at the time of the consultation. Um, and we like to um, prepare it as what we call an information prescription. Patients have become very accustomed to getting prescriptions for medicine when they're ill and they understand that um, prescriptions are something doctors give them to treat their condition. In fact, sometimes when we don't give patients prescriptions, they feel a bit cheated. So if you're not giving them something for their sore throat, they can feel a bit miffed um and that but there is something more powerful a lot of the time than giving them a, a pharmaceutical prescription and it's actually information and the power to do something about their health themselves and we really believe that information can be the most powerful prescription a clinician can make for their patients thanks alice so this screen shows you um very simply how the, the healthy note platform works on the left-hand side, you can see the web interface for clinicians, uh, which is a simple interface for uh, user clinician to write a quick note to a patient. And on the right-hand side, use the search box to search for information. You can see in this case, diabetes. And in a few minutes, we'll do a live demo. Uh, once you've created your pick list of information, and that can include apps as well as information, uh, that then generates a single URL, a short URL that can be uh, sent out to the patient through you know whatever system you want, whether that's AcuRx or MJOG uh, or whatever. Um, in some cases, in secondary care, um, QR codes are being put on clinic letters because, as we all know, secondary care is not as digitally competent as primary care. Um, and the patient can then receive that link uh, by whatever means and then either scan the QR code with their phone or click on the link to see what information has been selected for them. Uh, our service works either as an app or as a web-based service. So if patients are using a, a smartphone, they can choose whether to download the app or look at it on the web. Um, and of course, what we find is that most people start off looking at the, the web because that's much easier to use. Um, but if they do download the app, it means they can use extra functions like putting the phone in a Google Cardboard headset and looking at the content in 3D if it's in the 3D format. So it's I hope you agree, you know, really good for patients to get information that's been recommended by their GP or nurse or pharmacist. Um, and and that, that's really valuable for patients as a sort of um, follow on from a consultation. But we also have had great feedback from, from GPs that are using it that can actually save time in the consultation because it's, it's a good closer for the consultation to say, OK, I'm going to send you some information, look out for the, for the text. And so what we hope um, Healthy Note will do is be great for patients, but also be great for clinicians and for the NHS in, in making uh, consultations more effective, more efficient, helping to uh, empower people to look after their health, but also saving time in the consultation. You know, and you know, particularly with online consultations, I think we need all the tools we can get to, to provide the right information to patients so they know what, what, what's going on and what to do. And um, we've partnered with eConsult. I'm sure many of you use eConsult. What that means is if you're a user of eConsult, you won't need to use the web interface. You can go to the post consult message or the toolbar of eConsult, and we'll show you a demo in a second, um, and use the Healthy Note search um, really simply. So very, very little uh, added clicks. Um, so I think definitely if you're an eConsult user, it can really help you to um, save time. And what we found so far is that about 11,000 GPs in about 1,600 practices have been using Healthy Note to date, which is, I think, about 50% of eConsult users are already using Healthy Note, which is really good to see because that's only been going for a few months. In the future, what we're hoping to do is to link into the health record so that we can start to personalize the content automatically. So you know, less input from the clinician and more automated content. So for example, if a patient's on methotrexate, they can be sent information about methotrexate without uh, anyone having to select that. And also to be um, working on producing m new forms of, uh, of content to make it you know, much more impactful 
and being able to provide people with information in um, broken up into chapters so that we don't overload information uh, people with information but send them information at different points in their their journey so for instance once they've had their health check they might get information about blood pressure uh, and then get a follow-up when they're started on some treatment for that so um, at this point i guess we could take some questions or we can move to um, a short video to show how it works in eConsult. What, what would you like to do? How about we have a look at the demo? Because um, I think that gives people time to think of some of the questions they've got. If not, I've already got some that have been sent to me outside of this. So um, I've got a couple to ask you. But I think seeing the demo may help to explain a few more features, and then we can take it from there. OK, cool. So if it's OK, I'll just start with the video. Is the sound coming OK? Are OK? Don't think we're getting the sound through, unfortunately. Ah. OK, well, this is a video that shows the integration with eConsult. Here's the eConsult toolbar. So you can write a message to the patient and then use the search bar that's been highlighted in this case, smoking, and it will come up with mm -hmm. different smoking resources, including apps. You can preview Lots the options. content. Yeah. yeah. And then add them in, and it creates a sort of shopping basket of all the content that you've selected. And you can remove them if you change your mind afterwards. So then this is just sending the message. If you're using your consult, it goes automatically to the system. And EMIS and System 1 integrations mean that it gets written to the health record. But you can also copy it if you want to manually add it in anywhere else or send it via another system. And this is the view that the patient sees. Okay. And of course, patients can share it with friends and family. Okay, so I'll just switch to the demo. So this is the web interface. So um, this works for, for anyone. Uh, West, we're just in the process of rolling this out. So if you want to use this, uh, uh, you need to contact us and we'll give you a code so that you can uh, complete a very simple registration because we just want to verify that you are, are a clinician. Um, but we will be launching a, a full registration system soon. Um, so if you imagine you've just seen a patient, you can write your message in the text box, and then you can search for information. So let's just see. I'm looking for some information about allergies. I could select this food allergy information from NHS UK, or I could pick one of the videos from health and care videos. If I wanted to preview it. I can see what videos are there and have a look at them. So let's just add that one and that one. Um, and let's also pick some information on EpiPen. This is an example of a visual content program that we've actually built. Uh, and we've been trialing this in Cardiff with children to compare the, the training impact of uh, training uh, kids how to use the EpiPen, comparing the nurse training versus the um, iPad-based visual training that we've produced with, with great results. Um, we found that the kids were more effectively trained using the visual technique. So I could include that as well. And I can see which ones I've picked. And then if I if I sent this to the patient, they would have obviously get this message. But just to show you quickly the patient view, if I just copy that link, put it into a new tab, I get the, my information prescription. So the mm -hmm. patient view looks a little bit like a prescription, doesn't it? We've chosen that color on purpose. So you can see the three things that have been recommended to me. I can I can click on them. Let's just pick on that one. If it's a third party website, of course, there's just takes me like to that. But if it's content that we've produced, it's within the same browser. And we're just about to launch a registration onto this so that patients can create a registration, which means that they can save their information prescriptions. And if, say, you've sent them two or three different things on different occasions, they'll all be stacked up there and they can see the information prescriptions by date. Uh, 
Um, and patients can also search for their own information. So if they wanted to look for information for themselves, um, they can search the same database. There is some content that we only make available to clinicians, but 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 for the vast majority, it's the patients can search for the same information that clinicians can search for, but they show up differently in the patient view. So that's that's where we are with Healthy Note, and we've got lots of exciting developments, including the AI things that I talked to you about. But really interested to understand what people think of it, and happy to take questions. Sure. So I guess we've got a couple of questions. And firstly, I would like to say I'm really impressed with the platform, actually. Um, I like the way that it looks like a prescription to the patient. That That's really just a, a UX kind of thing that just is so nice to see, to be honest. And it helps align with, I guess, with you know what you're hoping the outcome is, that the patient sees it as an action that they can do and engage with. Um, I guess if I'm looking at it from a perspective of similar sorts of things, so I know other platforms have similar things where it links, to, for example, to NHS.UK, which absolutely saw as one of the content providers there. Um, you mentioned a few other content providers in terms of Orca and mm -hmm. other kind of websites and stuff. Um, how are you finding the engagement, with particularly the app side of things are from patients' perspectives? You know, Do they seem to go more to websites or is it more to other apps or have you got any of that kind of information? Well, what we found so far is that um, even, I mean, you've got to start with the clinician, really. Um, the mm. numbers of apps being recommended by clinicians are relatively low. Um, but what our user testing with patients shows that patients really like being recommended an app by a clinician because, as we all know, there are so many thousands of apps out there that it's very bewildering to know what, what app to use. So mm -hmm. having an app that's been recommended by your clinician is really valuable for people. Um, we, in general, we find that people are very receptive to it. Um, and, you know, the role of Orca in verifying those apps and scoring them is also very useful, of course. And so we only put apps that have been uh, recommended by Orca um, mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, that they are of high quality. Mm -hmm. You mentioned and you show the integration with eConsult in particular, and obviously that's more ingrained and stuff. But for those that don't have access to eConsult, how does that journey kind of differ? And in particular how well integrated could it be i mean is it a case of copy paste or is it some other route that you would be looking at so we're trying to keep it as streamlined as possible we're all aware that you know workflow efficiency is really important mm -hmm. um so it would if you're not an e-consult user it would be using a web browser to use the healthy note pro interface um it's the demonstration that tim gave using that interface and then it's just the click copy to clipboard and then you can put that, you know, one click into, you know, your um, AccuRx email or whatever. So try to make it as few steps as possible um, and look at integrating with, you know, some of the bigger healthcare um, electronic health record providers, you know, is always on our ongoing plan. Cool. With that whole copy paste element. So say, for example, I saw a patient and... I wanted to generate a headache diary app and a resource to direct them to NHS.UK's website on headaches. Um, and I copied that link. Mm -hmm. Will that link work um, ongoing for other patients as well? Or does it have to be refreshed? And I guess I'm thinking about, you know, not having to then go into Healthy Note necessarily every single time I want to recommend the same kind of resources I may want to recommend for particular yes. health conditions. Um, so at the moment, each code that you copy and paste is uni a unique patient prescription but okay. what we are working on is some basically templates to put into the healthy note pro um and sort of favoriting that the um clinician can do because we all know that we've got sort of favorite bits of information common consultations mm -hmm. so that way you could sort of have pre-selected information pieces and a pre-selected script that you could pull all together and send mm -hmm. for those sorts of patients um, I guess one question I always get asked to ask to everybody that comes on this, um, how much does it cost? <laughs> um, well, we've decided to make it free in its current form to the NHS. Um, and and although it would be nice to to have some revenue, um, the reason that we've done that is that we, we want to make sure that we can really demonstrate the value of it. And we're planning to keep that basic service free in the long term. But what we plan to do is to layer in additional services that uh, would be available on a licensed basis. We're still working out exactly what that would be. But what we're thinking is a sort of low capitation fee 
you know, a small number of pence per patient per year for features that, you know, we believe can really support improving care pathways for patients. Because, you know, we're very aware that to charge something for somebody, you've got to prove some value, you know, ideally mm-hmm. cost saving somewhere. Um, we also do get revenue from other sources. So we do produce content for industry. So we make um, how to explain videos and things for devices and for pharmaceutical companies. Um, so that that enables us to allow provide this for free to the NHS. Cool. And um, if people did want to, you know, start using the products and stuff, what kind of time frames are we talking about for them to, I guess, from contacting yourselves to then going live with, you know, the product? Um, can you give us an idea of that? I was going to say it's um, it'd be a case of going to the Cognitant website. I think um, we've got a contact us page. If you just let let us know you're interested, I think someone would get back to you. You know, within probably a few days. Is I'll double checking with Tim, but within a couple of days with yep. a code that would allow you to use the Healthy Note Pro interface on the web browser. Yeah, it's a little bit manual at the moment for non e consult users, but we're working hard to integrate with other systems and of course we're thinking about secondary care as well as primary care um, because there's quite a patchwork quilt of different systems and providers so Mm -hmm. it's not an easy easy task Um, but in the meantime if you'd like to use it and you're not an e-consult user just um, use the contact us on the website and we'll send you back a code and that code will be linked to your practice so that it'll automatically populate your information prescriptions with your practice details so the patient will know which practice it's come from. Cool. Um, and in terms of contacting you, so you mentioned the Cognizant website. Is, is that the best place to go, or is there other places you'd recommend people have a look for the content and things? Well, uh, the Cognizant website is probably the best, but of course, people are very welcome to uh, email us direct. Um, and it's also worth having a look at the healthynote.com website. So you can actually try out the patient view for yourself, because after all, we're all patients. Um, so you can have a play about with it without having to um, get a link and you can you can have a look at the content, view the content and you know see see what you think of it and, and get a good idea of what it'd be like for patients if you send them information prescriptions. And the same way you can download the app if you want to have a browse. Yep. Cool. Um, what do you see as the future for Health and Note and Cognizant, phase, for example, in six months to a year's time? I and mean, obviously there's some really cool stuff in terms of boarding more practices and seeing the benefits of it but what do you see is the kind of like the next stage of the journey for you guys well well i guess our, our mission is is to empower people with with health information so you know we're all aware of of how general practice is under such immense strain at the moment what we'd really like to see is that tools like healthy note can help to ease the strain help patients to take a little bit more control over their health reduce unnecessary visits to emergency departments and GP practices and improve people's confidence in managing their conditions. And ultimately, we want to be able to show that we can improve outcomes. You know, say, say a patient's got asthma, if they can understand more about their asthma, understand how to use their medication properly, can we uh, help that patient to you know, have um, a better lifestyle, you know, reduce the number of exacerbations, reduce use of steroids, Mm-hmm. reduce attendances at emergency departments, you know, be able to work more days of the year, maybe able to take, you know, enjoy sport and life in general. So those are the, you know, I think, I think there's, there's multiple ways that we can demonstrate an impact, but it, it, it's something that we can only achieve if we work with all the different systems out there, the e-triage systems, the electronic health records, you know, the video providers, the SMS providers. So it's, it's about working together to provide digital solutions that can really have a big impact on, patient outcomes, but also the efficiency and working practices in healthcare. Cool. So thank you for that, both of you. I know that's been really useful. And uh, I know that in terms of the questions we've had through, been helpful to answer them directly. I must admit, I'm really impressed, if I'm being honest. Um, and you're probably going to be getting my email in a few minutes, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I wish I could multitask and stuff. But yeah, I love it. Um, big fan of Orca's work. I've always um, been aware of the stuff they've been doing. And one of the key things I love about this is it seems like you've managed to integrate what Orca have been trying to do with other platforms in the same interface. And, and for me personally, that that's just an amazing thing to do. Um, being able to share that information with patients, absolutely really important. 
I can see so many applications, you know, helping patients understand how to use their creams more effectively with the right kind of guides, you know, web and video based, really useful. And as you mentioned, Alice, you know, that's stuff we don't have time to do in the consultation, but it's part of the reason why they keep coming back because they haven't yeah. had the right information. And actually with the right information, we can empower our patients to be more effective at understanding the health issues helping the practice actually to navigate them to the right places and, and ultimately hopefully better healthcare <laughs> that's the aim cool so really really impressed uh, i must admit and i hope all of our agp learners definitely check it out i know i will be doing so as soon as we finish this broadcast and stuff um if people do want to check them out as we mentioned have a look at cognizant.co.com sorry I was going to say .co.uk there, um, and the website's there, and all the links will be down in, in the description, and I'll try and get the video link from Tim as well so that you can hear the audio version of that, so you can check that out in the descriptions as well. And as always, EGP learners, we're here to help tech enhance your primary care and learning. We'll catch you in the next episode. See you later. Thank you.